Welcome back, everyone. We're going to be continuing with our discussion on uh, the causes of the American Civil War. And we're going to kind of look today at the undoing of the Missouri Compromise. And it happens through a compromise made by the same guy who made the original Missouri Compromise. So the guy behind this all is Henry Clay. And he basically saying, listen, this slavery issue, it's really dividing us and we need to make peace. So what we're going to try and do is have this compromise. Okay. And the big question they're trying to answer is, okay, what do we do with all this land now that we've won it from the Mexicans in the Mexican-American War? So there's four key points to our Compromise of 1850. The first is that California is going to be admitted as a, as a free state. And if you think about California down here, it was kind of cut in half by the Missouri Compromise line. But it's going to come in as one big state, uh, California. Remember, they've recently found out like gold. It's very A ton of people are living there now very popular and uh, those people the people that live there for the most part did not want to have slavery so California is gonna remain one big state because that's what they wanted and they're going to um, come in as free they kind of push this along because California now having all that gold you know that heck they could become their own country if we're not careful so um, they really want to lead them into the country and so this is a kind of a big win for the north if you think about it because now for the first time in a long time we're going to have more free states than slave states. So if you are a Southerner, you're not liking this very much at all. So you're if, that, if California's going to come as free, you're going to need to get something out of it. Uh, New Mexico and Utah, they're going to decide on the issue of slavery through popular sovereignty. So the people that are living in those territories of New Mexico and Utah, they're going to vote whether to be free or a slave. And they're both going to end up going uh, the route of slavery. Or sorry, at least New Mexico goes slavery. Um, Northerners could live with this because they're getting California. Um, but overall, kind of, you know, not a great deal for the South so far. Slave trade, meaning the buy and selling the auctions and whatnot, is going to be banned in Washington City, Washington, D.C., not slavery. You could still own slaves in the nation's capital through the American Civil War. So even when Lincoln frees the slaves in the South, Slaves within Washington, D.C. still remain slaves. And so, you know, that's kind of another win kind of for the North. Um, so, you know, okay, now we don't have this embarrassment of slave auctions in our nation's capital. So really, the South is, they're re it's really not a great deal for them so far. But what they get in exchange is this new Fugitive Slave Act, which we'll talk about more here in the next thing. But again, if you kind of break it down, you have slaves who have run away, they're fugitives, and it's a law regarding them. So let's kind of look at what's decided there. So what you have is part of these comrades of 1850s, these things, these guys called commissioners, which is what their kind of official title is. In reality, they're slave catchers. They can now go anywhere in the country to find escaped slaves. Before, if you were a slave and you ran away and got to a free state, then you would be free. And you're former master could not come and catch catch you now they can come and get you now this doesn't just make it a bad problem for escape says it's also if you are a free african-american then you're also now in danger because they can just come and kidnap you say you're not free you're a slave take you back south okay these commissioners are paid per person they arrest so they have an incentive to bring as many african-americans whether they're escaped slaves or not back to the south um the northerners they really don't like this they feel like this is taking away a state's rights issue because the states have banned slavery. So you're kind of bringing this essence of slavery into the North. Okay. It's going to show the Northerners what slavery really looks like. Um, and it basically, it's showing them the harshness of it, but it's also these slave catchers, they're kind of operating like their own little, like, you know, supreme being that really state laws do not apply to. They can do whatever they want. If you were a northerner and you were caught trying to help a slave escape, you could now be put in prison for it. So it was very harsh on those that were helping with things like the Underground Railroad and whatnot. And the other thing is, these people that are arrested, they are not given a jury trial to determine whether they're a runaway or not. So it's very, very harsh, very beneficial for a southerner, very beneficial to people that want to keep slavery going, but not beneficial, um, obviously, for your African Americans, but people that are opposed to slavery. In the end, this law kind of backfires because it shows Northerners how bad slavery kind of really is. It's going to push a lot of them to wanting to end slavery. And we're going to look at kind of how this movement keeps going in our next video.